our Celadon Cytoserosin is safely back in Albrez, and we have put the first of eight gas check marks up on our shopping list. Took us about three hours, I think, of scanning to find that first gas site, and we've still got seven more to go, so it's going to be a little bit of a grind. There is still more gas that I know for sure can spawn out here in Solitude that we need. And the eagle-eyed viewer of the previous episode may have noticed that when I went to pick up the Venture to huff the Celadon Cytoserosin, I showed the flight of the Venture from Albrez to Agalors, but I didn't show Percival the Probe flying from Agalors back to Albrez to get that Venture. That's because I was in such a rush to huff the gas that in fact I took the Pod Express. I self-destructed my pod so that I would wake up at home in Albrez and could immediately fly the Venture over to Agalors. And what that means is that Percival the Probe is still out here in solitude. So it's time for us to fly back to Albrez and scan along the way, see what we can find, hopefully some more gas, and maybe, maybe we'll take an opportunity to run some of those interesting kinds of exploration sites that we were finding that we didn't run when we were laser focused on the gas. This is Bill. Bill wants to build a Cinnaball and join the Angel Cartel cause in Zarzak, but he's not making it easy on himself. Percival, let's do a little bit of scanning. Now, because we've bookmarked all of these sites, we can see that URP here, we already have scanned down, it's a rogue trial yard. And then the Phoenix Nebula has despawned, and the Decayed Site has despawned. So these two signatures are new ones. Those are the ones we want to scan. Wormholes both. Let's check next door in Shichoken. Now we're in a Mars space now. We've actually left Solitude. Well, let's scan it down anyways. We don't get into a Mars space very often. Never know what we might find. Gas Site. Oh. Oh, welcome. Crimson Nebula Malachite is not on our list. I was going to say, I think that the gas that we need is mostly to be found in Galente and Mimitar space, because Galente and Mimitar are the factions affiliated with the Angel ship line. So, as I should have suspected, looking for gas out here in Amar space is probably a bit of a waste of our time. If we were gas hopping for money, um, and it seems to be a pretty reliable way to earn isk, then of course we wouldn't especially care too much which gas we found. Some of them will be more valuable than others, but most of the low set gases I think are going to be worth your time to hunt. We almost certainly are not going to build anything else that requires gas. So for us, unless the gas is on our materials list for the Cinnaball, it is essentially valueless to us. Decayed Serpentis Lone Vessel. Oh, there's a Metamorphosis already in this site. Metamorphosis is a very expensive hacking ship that usually is not well armed. I suspect that we can probably chase him off very quickly. Yep. There we here. Soul Pahan. This is our site. <laughs> Good fight. Of course, we have no tank. We don't even have a damage control fit to our ship. <laughs> and we certainly don't have a warp scrambler or anything. Plus, Metamorphosis have the built-in warp scram property like the ventures have as well so we were less than no threat to that metamorphosis <laughs> but as is often the case in this game all you gotta do is show the suggestion of having teeth and people will run in eve people are usually either actively looking for a fight or willing to do almost anything to avoid a fight and i was quite sure that, that metamorphosis running this relic site was not actively looking for a fight now, of course, there is the concern that he's going to come back in a pacifier. <laughs> you know what? I see now a pacifier on scan with the same name as his metamorphosis had a second ago. So I suspect we may have poked a bee's nest here. I'm pretty sure that pacifier is currently cloaked in that site. So we're going to leave him to it. But we got one can out of it. Decayed Serpentis Mass Grave. Standard Serpentis Covert Research Lab. 
That's another go site. We'll run it. We're going to dock up to drop off all of our stuff first, because of course, every time you run a go site, you are putting your ship's life at substantial risk. Now we've got a cargo scanner now, so I actually think we might try two cans. We might burn for the most unique can that's closest, start hacking it, and while we're hacking it, we can be cargo scanning the other cans to see if any of them have anything that's of value to us. I think we can probably, now that I've remembered how to do this game, I think we can probably do two cans and get out before the NPCs show up to kill us. Okay, the clock starts ticking now. It's intense music. It's so scary knowing that those rats that will immediately kill you are on their way and not knowing how long till they get there. I'll go for the data bank. Burn in, and then we're gonna lock up these other other ones and cargo scan them. My clock is ticking. And if we fail this hack, our ship dies too. So we can't even just rush it. We have to be there we go. Okay, good. Cool stuff. Okay, and then we're gonna go for this one because that looks cool too. I don't think we're gonna be building a mid grain ascendancy, ascendancy Epsilon. Oh, it's another one of those things. That's funny. Does every site have one of those 200 million-esque modules in it? That's crazy. Every ghost site is worth 200 million-esque if you hack the right can. That is nuts. We've just got to get this quickly because we're even hacking two cans. I'm getting a little bit stressed. Good. We got it all. Get out. And we're leaving that 200 million-esque piece of loot behind because we're not going to try and hack three cans. Now the stuff we've got here says that it's worth 30 million-esque. I don't think the covert research tools and the shattered villard wheel will be things that we can actually use. And I don't think we're going to build a mid-grade ascendancy. So I don't know where we get... Oh. So we have the shattered villard wheels. I don't know where we get these... Or these, I think they might be PI. And Morphite, <laughs> Morphite's just not in reach for us. What about the Mobile Depot? This is all PI stuff. See, Mobile Depots are kind of interesting for us, and the Wetu is, you know, it's nice, it's better than regular Tech 1, but I'm really not sure we're building this either. Not sure how much value this actually is to us. Unless NPCs buy those covert research tools? Maybe. A gas site? Oh, Phoenix Nebula. It's the same, the same gas we had before, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that a given Nebula name always has the same gas. Celadon Cytoserosin hold it. Limited sleeper cache. This is an interesting site. It is somewhat dangerous. I think it might be worth running for us, though. We're going to have to dock up and drop off all of our loot, of course. The sleeper caches can kill you. A limited sleeper cache, though, is one that you can 100% run in a T1 exploration frigate with no tank. You just have to be careful and know what you're doing. So I'm about to show you either how to run a limited sleeper cache in a Tech 1 Exploration Frigate, or I'm going to show you how to die in a limited sleeper cache by screwing it up in a Tech 1 Exploration Frigate. Let's find out. Actually, as it turns out, there's a third option. I can show you how to start running a limited sleeper cache very effectively, how to get distracted, and then caught by a PvP pilot in a vengeance, and die. I'm not going to show you the tutorial style footage that I was running in the early part of that limited sleeper cache because I'm still hoping we'll get a chance to do one in a later episode. And that is the danger of a sleeper site. <laughs> there are several dangers to sleeper sites. Good fight, vengeance. This is why we dropped off all of our loot in the station. <laughs> uh, this is the sad story of Percival the Probe who got too hyper-focused in a limited sleeper cache, did not notice a vengeance warp again. He has already done more than could possibly have been asked for him in that he helped us find the Celadon Cytoserosin. I believe it's traditional in situations like this one to say, already replaced. 
But the truth is, nothing could really replace Percival in our hearts. So I prefer instead to say, already succeeded. Percival has already been succeeded by Penelope the Probe. And Penelope has a light iron blaster one, so the next vengeance that tries to mess with Bill had better look out. Already replaced. And I took a little peek at Eve Tycoon, and it turns out that there are indeed NPC buy orders for these covert research tools in Nullsec, including in TXW TAC, the syndicate border system just three jumps away. What's more, 43 covert research tools fit in the hold of a shuttle. Let's go. 20 million isk. Yes. This really changes the equation on those ghost sites. There's so much stuff in those sites that we can't use, but if we target the covert research tools, that can make a really big difference to our wallet. We'll keep our eyes open for those. All right, Penelope, let's see what we can't find in our own backyard. A nebula right here in Elbrus. But there are a bunch of people in system, well, three people in system currently. We're going to pop in and see if it's one of the gases that we need. Viridian Cytosero... Yes, we need 10 of that. So there's this catalyst on D-Scan. But he's on far scan. Okay, we're going to grab Vera and go for it. See if we can't knock this off real quick. This would be a coup right here in Albrus. Right here in Albrus. Viridian Cytoserosin. All right, Vera, let's get it. Just 10. I think that's like three cycles. There's only one cloud here. The other two sites that we saw both had two clouds. I'm not sure if that's because this site only ever has one cloud. Maybe some of them do, or if this means that someone's already been in here harvesting this. So either way, the site's empty now. Our scoops are scooping. Well, good. Okay, now we're going to go for 20. As long as D-Scan looks clear. Because then again, we are going to have to move this probably over to Menard to actually build the Cinnaball. If we have 20, we can move one batch of 10 and still have 10 more in reserve in case something terrible happens. I'm pounding D-Scan like a madman. 16. One more cycle. 20 en route. Oh. Yes, please. Forgotten Nebula. Right here in our backyard. Straight into the Cinnaball materials. Good job, Vera. Let's put up that check mark. Oh, we're killing it. Provisional Serpentis Outpost. Core Runner Drop Distribution. Another, another drug lab. Okay. Wormhole. You know, I think that Provisional Serpentis Outpost is something that we could potentially run in Catherine the Catalyst. We found so many combat sites on our last little exploration mission, and we didn't run any of them. I think we should give this a try. The Provisional Serpentis Outpost is not a DED site. It's what's called an unrated combat signature. This might be crazy, but we're going to try this in a blaster fit. An unrated combat signature is basically like a super anomaly. Like Anomalies, their pockets full of NPCs, and like Anomalies, they have a chance of spawning a faction ship at the end, which can drop faction loot. They also, like Anomalies, have a chance of escalating, only they don't escalate into DED sites, they escalate into expeditions, which are a chain of further unrated combat signatures, each with their own chance of faction spawns, which can drop faction or sometimes DED loot. I'm pretty sure this anomaly is designed for cruisers or even battle cruisers to run, but uh, let's let's see what we can do <laughs> with Catherine with the full rack of blasters. I don't think there's anything in here that can tackle, so worst case scenario, we should be able to run. Okay, so most of them are actually quite far away from us, which is good. We don't have to fight everyone all at once. Hopefully killing this guy at the warp in doesn't immediately spawn a whole bunch more people right here. Nope, so far so good. 89 kilometers is a fair way to fly under afterburner power, but we don't have anywhere else to be. Three little frigates, just food for our blasters. We have quite a ways to fly to get to that cruiser. 
122 kilometers. Here we come. This should take us, what, like three minutes? At 700 meters per second? I can't help but notice that we're flying further away from the acceleration gate, so it's going to be a bit of a journey back there as well, but at least we're close enough to target this guy. So there is an acceleration gate, which means there is a second pocket. And we'll see what's in there. Hopefully it's not a whole bunch of destroyers and cruisers sitting at the warp in. Easy enough. Oh, three more Corelli agents spawned. And they're over in a whole other area of space. This is really feeling like this site is designed to be run with a micro warp drive. We will keep that in mind if we find another one later. Or I suppose in a ship that can shoot 130 kilometers away, which is very much not our blaster catalyst. We're going to one shot all of these Corelli agents once we get over there, more or less. We're flying 130 kilometers under afterburner power just to blap, blap, blap. Okay, that seems to be all of them. Unfortunately, the gate is still closer to us than I thought it would be. I guess we flew in a big triangle. On to the next pocket, and hopefully we don't have to abandon the site. If there are like six destroyers and five cruisers right where we land, I'm just not sure how we're going to be able to whittle it down. But if they're spread out like they were in this first pocket, I actually feel pretty confident about Catherine's ability to take the pockets down one at a time. Reload our guns while we're at it. Oh, another cruiser spawned, but thankfully, he's very close. Okay, now can we take the gate? Yes. Destroying the Serpentis Armory would greatly improve your odds of uncovering further illicit activity. Okay. Okay, where's the armory? 162 kilometers away. We'll start flying towards the armory and let these two frigates fly over to us. Come on, I'll happily kill you. I just don't want to fly to you to do it. Another two frigates and a battle cruiser, and they're directly in our way. So we're gonna have to take these guys out first. Let's get in orbit of the battle cruiser. We'll start manually piloting if the battle cruiser starts shooting us and we take significant damage. But so far he's just targeting us. The frigates are shooting us now. Still no word from the battle cruiser. And the frigates are not doing a significant amount of damage. But we should lock these guys all up. Okay, maybe I will actually veer over and kill these frigates first, since that will also give me transversal on the battle cruiser while I'm doing it. Need to turn on the armor up. Bunch more frigates spawned, and they're 40 kilometers away. Hopefully I can deal with this battle cruiser before the other frigates get here. Battle cruiser down. Over to deal with the frigates. Oh, we have a faction cruiser spawned. That's exciting news. Yeah, so it feels very much like an anomaly. I mean, it's two pockets instead of one. Bunch of bad guys. Chance of a faction spawn. Higher chance, though, I think, in the uh, unrated signatures than you would get in a regular anomaly. So that Shadow Serpentis cruiser is a lucky roll. He doesn't always appear, but you have a much better chance of getting one in a site like this than you would in, like, a hideaway or a rally point or what have you. And if we kill that faction cruiser or kill the armory that the text pop-up mentioned, we should have a chance at a further escalation, which will give us even more chances to roll the dice for even more faction spawns. Basically, if you have scan probes and running anomalies is something that you might do, you should definitely consider adding these unrated signatures to your menu. They come in all sizes, and this is a pretty high level one to be trying to do in a destroyer. Like I said, this level seems to be the cruiser to battle cruiser balanced levels. But there are frigate and destroyer balanced ones as well. We found a lookout the other day that we didn't run, and I believe the lookout is designed for destroyers. So if we see another one of those, we'll definitely do it as well. 
But the nice thing about doing the higher tier sites that are designed for cruisers is that when you get the faction spawn, you get a faction cruiser. Which has a better chance of having more valuable loot in it. Hopefully not just valuable in ISK though, hopefully valuable in terms of our ability to actually make use of it. Oh, and we got the escalation. We didn't even have to destroy the armory. Guardian Angel Surveillance Squad. It seemed for a while that you would manage to get all of the pirates, but evidently one of the guard ships from the Guardian Angels has slipped away. Luckily, your scanners seem to have gathered enough information to give you its approximate destination. Oh, the Serpentis are in league with the Angels. But we're not going to feel bad about chasing them down. Think we can do it in a catalyst? Thanks so much for watching, whether this was your first episode or whether you've been with us from the very beginning. I'm going on vacation next week. I'm going to try and get an episode in the queue before I go, but in case my editing takes longer than I expect, I'll see you back here around March 11th. Fly safe.